everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new video every single Wednesday to help sewers and quilters of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'm sharing another video in the Sampler Sew Along. It is a Block of the Month style series where I'm sharing 12 different traditional quilt blocks, one each month, so that we can sew them together and make a sampler style quilt from start to finish. If you came across this video at random and you want to know more about the Sampler Sew Along, you can check out the playlist that has all of the videos that I've posted so far and that link is down in the video description. Also make sure to hit that red subscribe button while you're down there so you don't miss out the rest of the videos in the series. Today's block is called Flying Geese and is actually one of the blocks that was used in the Underground Railroad to convey um, secret messages to help people know which way they were supposed to go to find safety and shelter. There are several different ways you can put together the Flying Geese block, different styles of sewing as well as different layouts of it. So today I'm going to show you one of my favorite layouts of the Flying Geese block. To make this quilt block, you will need four different rectangles in your dark fabric and four in your medium fabric that measure three and a half by six and a half inches. You will also need 16 squares in your light fabric cut to three and a half by three and a half inches. If you want some tips and info on how to best cut your fabrics, um, I covered some of those in the earlier sew along videos, so make sure to check those out. Lay out the rectangles and place one of the white squares on right sides together, lining up the top, bottom, and left side. Use a ruler and marking tool. Mine is just a pencil to mark from the lower left corner to the upper right corner. Make sure the marked line goes exactly to the point of each corner. Add a couple of pens to each piece and sew directly on the marked line on each set. Repeat until all eight rectangles are sewn this way. I like to sew them together in a method called chain piecing where you sew one piece after the other without cutting the thread in between. Then you just need to snip the threads in between. When pressed open, the unit will look like this, but first we need to trim some excess fabric away. I pop on my rotary safe glove and get my ruler and rotary cutter out. Then I trim away the corner of each rectangle leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. It's the corner where the white bit will flip over and cover later. If you're unsure where to cut, flip the white bit up to check and then trim away the two layers that are underneath that flipped up part. By the way, the supplies I'm using really help this process go smoothly and you can find an Amazon link where I have all the supplies listed out in the description box below. After trimming each rectangle, give them a nice press. Now add another white square to the right side of each rectangle. It will overlap just a bit with the first at the top center and that is totally fine. That area will be in the seam allowance later. Mark a line from the upper left corner to the lower right corner on each and pen and sew directly on the line like before. Repeat for all eight rectangles. Then trim away those two underneath layers like before so that when the white bit is opened, it forms the white corners. This is eliminating a lot of unnecessary bulk from the block. Press each unit nice and flat. Lay the four matching rectangles in a line all pointing the same direction. Flip the top piece over so it's right sides together with the second and sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the third piece up and sew it on. And finally add the fourth piece in the row. Press all the seam allowances toward the darker fabric. Repeat the same steps with the remaining four pieces. All that's left is to sew the two rows together. You can have the arrows all going in one direction or you can have them going in opposite directions like mine. Give the seams another press of the iron and the block is completed. It should measure 12 and a half by 12 and a half inches right now and will be 12 inches when sewn into the finished quilt. 
take a picture of your block and share it using hashtag sampler so along so that we can all see the awesome block that you have made and then go ahead and pick out your fabrics for the next block which is shown here on the screen in gray you can find that entire sampler so along playlist that i mentioned earlier linked right over here to the side also make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos in the series and until next time happy sewing